What is this? What is happening? Also, we're moving me over because I have a lot of blank space. What? Oh my goodness. Well, welcome to The Cup, the currently unnamed podcast where the tea is piping hot and we are always, or the reality is always piping hot and we are always ready to spill. I'm Logan Murphy, just a gay, here with large pitcher that I have now named, we've named her, this is Pitcha Paytas <laughs> in honor of problematic icon Trisha Paytas. Um, but yeah, she is here today with a lot of caffeine because we've got a lot of house guests to talk about. And I am Lana, your resident diva, loving all the tea. And I too have a big picture. I have not named her, so I don't know. I can't be as creative, but just know. I am here for all the tea. I'm ready to spill. I'm ready to drink it up. So you know what to do. If you have tea, like, subscribe, comment in all of our sections and talk to us. We like talking to you. So you talk to us. And we have a special guest in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, well, everybody. Is- um, Livy here. So excited to be on the podcast today talking about the new cast and spilling all the tea on our new house guest. So. Yeah. So we are talking Big Brother Canada today. Finally, we're excited. We're so excited. I mean, uh, after the mess that we just had to endure with Celebrity Big Brother, it is time for some real Big Brother and not the foolishness that that was. So I'm excited to just d- jump in and talk about this amazing looking cast because I don't know, they look kind of kind of hot they can like they look kind of hot to me it's I, some- was, I was gonna say kind of young and then i looked at the mm-hmm. average age mm-hmm. and this is the second oldest cast by average mm. on bb can we love that I, can- I had the same first impression i was like oh everyone's so young and i was like oh actually mm-hmm. they're not <laughs> bb can cast young with like usually one or two um a house guest of a certain age. Mm-hmm. Um, I think immediately of Rosina, my icon, my legend. Uh, mm-hmm. I know Livy hasn't watched through BB Can. So this is your first full experience with Big Brother Canada. Uh, mm-hmm. What I like to call the best Big Brother franchise available currently, <laughs> uh, in my personal opinion. Um, but yes. 16 house guests from all over every inch of Canada that they could possibly get. Uh, the theme, okay, if the house is actually a game show theme, y'all, I'm so excited. I'm very excited about that. I love game shows more than anything. So if this house is a game show theme and then this season is all about game shows, I am here for it. I will be watching intently, picking up all the little details and nuances that they have in this house because I love game shows so much. Yeah, it's such a fun concept idea. And I feel like there's probably going to be a lot of crazy twists that come with it if that's the theme we're going with with here. Well, and with BB Can, we know they take a theme and they really Mm -hmm. integrate it into every single aspect Mm -hmm. of the house, Mm -hmm. of the game, of all of it. So I am very excited uh, with that. Ladies, shall we just dive into the cast? I think we should. Fabulous. All right. Big Brother Canada 10, we're here. Not an all-stars, which is what we all thought it was going to be. What we all kind of hoped it would be, some Mm -hmm. of us. Um, But no, 16 brand new Canadian house guests. And we are starting with Betty. She is 31. She, her pronouns. She is one of many Virgos. 
Oh boy, we'll talk about Virgo tonight. Um, she is from she is from Edmonton, Alberta. She is happily taken. Her strategy is to find a group of people or a person to connect with, preferably on day one or two, and wants a killer alliance and playing a rock solid social game while working hard in competitions. She seems fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she seems like a lot of fun. Um, I know her video on the BB Can website. She talked a lot about um, making a lot of money and partying hard. So she definitely seems like a big personality, going to work hard, play hard, and hopefully brings that energy into the house. Yeah, I I think she's going to be somebody who's going to be very interesting to watch in this house because, like, she, she has a good strategy. Like, you definitely want to find somebody who you're going to connect with and, you know, early on in the game. Um, I don't really know what else. Like, I was looking at their, um, like, their, all the rest of their information that we didn't put on the slideshow. But I think she's going to be somebody who is going to be i don't i don't know I, I don't want to like put her in a place like middle of the pack or whatever mm -hmm. but i don't think she's going to come out the gate hard like yeah. some people like i have a feeling looking through this cast some some of these uh -huh. people come out the gate super hard and playing hard i don't think that's betty i think betty understands that you have to you know low lay back for a little bit but strike when the competition when she has to and like you said she wants to play a solid social game but still work hard in competitions <clears throat> yeah um talking a little bit more about her bio she said um the hardest part about the bb can experience is slop which mm. okay we're okay we're a fan great cool great uh, she's watched maybe at least at minimum an episode of big brother great <laughs> um she wants to be remembered as a loyal hard-working strong ethiopian woman from the prairies which we love um i will say though her most prized possession is her peloton She's athletic. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's very that. And then um, they always have the like rapid fire questions. So I want to go through that with all the house guests as well. Um, the questions for context are hero or villain, uh, comp beast or floater, no sleep or no food, intellectual skills or physical strength, uh, backstab your alliance or stay true to your word gut instinct or pure intellect and showman or no man's um to which betty replied hero comp beast no sleep intellectual skills staying true to her word using her gut instinct always and no man's because she's taken so mm -hmm. she seems fun i will say there's a there's a few casting choices this season that feel like spicy v from last mm. season mm. um there are a good number of people that seem like they were cast as like the party people a la a spicy v uh she is one of them for me but i don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because i love spicy v um but yeah i think she sounds on paper she sounds great mm -hmm. so yeah. I think for me, um, kind of what Lana was saying, she seems to kind of be falling in the middle of the pack. I think I don't see her going out super early, but I don't think she'll be over the top. Um, I think compared to a few other people on the cast, I do think a lot of people maybe are very over the top and very big personalities. And it seems like she has just the right amount of outgoingness and to kind of get along with everybody and maybe make it smooth sailing for a while. Yeah, I would agree. But yes, good luck to you, Betty. I'm excited to see you on feeds. Period. <laughs> Next up, Helena Jill. I believe it's Jill. The person I know with that name, with that spelling of that name is Jill. So I'm saying mm -hmm. Jill. Shout mm -hmm. out to Jill. We love Jill. We love um, Jill. Helena is 27. She, her pronouns, she's a Sagittarius from Surrey, BC. She's a master's student who is taken... Her strategy is to play a social game, be a friend, therapist, or whoever it takes for all of the house guests to fall in love with her and not see her as a threat and then be cutthroat when needed. She's someone I have my eye on, y'all. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think she describes herself um, as being just like a basic girl. 
somebody who is very relatable. Um, I think a lot of her answers showed that and she'll probably bring that into the house. She made a lot of self-deprecating jokes about herself, isn't very athletic, she says. Um, and I think all around just really funny and I think she'll get along with a lot of people. Yeah, I, I, I like her answer when they asked her, like, how do you want people to remember you as a player? And she said, I just want to be remembered as a player who gave it her all and never gave up. Also remember me as the season winner of Brother of Canada season 10. So yeah. she's very confident. And um, I love that. Also, I love that she said she wants to represent for the uh, for the women who for the hijabi women. Yeah. So yes, I love the hijabi women. Yes, absolutely. So I'm I love that for her and the representation. Um I, I she's very she's very confident in her athleticism or lack of athleticism, whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> I find uh, about herself, which is good. Right. Mm -hmm. So I feel like she'll be one of those people. I think if she can, you know, find that core group of people who who they can work with, I feel like she's somebody who will probably go pretty far in a game and um like I don't want to make winter picks like I know Logan likes to ask for winter picks preseason. I don't really know. And I will again. <laughs> but I know I feel like she's somebody who like you said definitely deserves to keep your eye on and um I'm interested to see how she um she operates in the house because like like last season it was people who I was like oh they are going to be amazing. And then they flopped. And it was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and so yeah. I don't. What? Uh, mm, mm, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I also feel like she's going to really fly under the radar. And she probably will find a solid alliance, I'm guessing. But I think people are really going to underestimate her, which could really play to her advantage. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Another thing with her strategy that I really liked, she says, be a friend, therapist, or whoever it takes. And I think a huge part of this game is just letting people talk to you and just listening. And if people feel like you're listening to what they have to say and can confide in you, like that builds a lot of trust and it goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I did want to bring up her rapid fire answers as well. Um, so she said she would be a hero. 50-50 uh, comp beast and floater. And I hate that they give this question mostly because a lot of people don't know the difference anymore between floating and coasting mm -hmm. because they are two very different things. If you need an example of a floater, look at June song. Mm -hmm. um, if you need an example of a coaster, the other Kyle Moore from last season. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it has such a negative connotation. And I think almost everybody says comp beast or a combination yeah. of comp beast and floater. Yeah. So not yeah. a great question. I'm also right. because first of all, but I, if I'm being honest, I know me. Like if I, they ask me that question, I'm like, there's no way I'm a comp beast. There's, I'm not comp beasting anything. Yeah. But I don't think I'm a floater because social strategy, your social uh, game is very important of part of the game. So your yeah. social, if your strength is your social game, why is that considered a floater? Yeah, I think it needs to be like comp beast, social butterfly, or like strategic mastermind. Mm -hmm. And then like I feel like I feel that. like it was in past seasons, and then they mm -hmm. just condensed it. Because Baby Can is good with like the questioning preseason. Um, that's like the one thing, one of the many things I will say BB Can has over BB US is they're very thorough with their with their bio process. But uh, but yeah, 50-50 comp beast or floater for Helena. She said no uh, no food. Uh, relying on her intellectual skills. She wants to stay true to her word, but backstab when needed, relying on her gut instinct. And she is a nomance because she's in a relationship. So. Period. Yeah, I really like her. I like her vibes. Like y'all were saying, she like she describes herself as an everyday girl. And I think that's one of the best things to be because in that capacity, you can be whoever anyone needs you to be mm -hmm. at that time to do whatever you need to do to win. So I'm very excited for Helena. Herman is next. He's 29. He, him pronouns. One of the only, if, or the only Taurus, which I will always mm -mm. root for a Taurus. There's two. There's two. There's two. Okay. 
Well, I will be rooting for him because he's a Taurus. From Nanaimo, BC, he's an auto sales general manager. He is single, and his strategy is to make the house guests fall in love with him, go for week two HOH, and he hopes to have an alliance or a final two by that. He's smart enough not to go for HOH week one. Although... As we've seen of lately, week one HOHs is not the same person as it used to be. I was going to say the new BB yeah. meta is to win the first HOH. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You win the first mm -hmm. HOH because then you get all the people flocking to you and getting all the alliances trying to build around you. And so, therefore, it's, uh, going for week one HOH isn't necessarily a bad thing anymore. But the fact that he was like, I'll wait and go for week two, lets me know that he does watch this show, and he does understand, but like, I hope he has the alliance or whatever before his HOA train, because then you're just getting fake people coming up to you trying to be fake, but needless to say, first of all, let me just say, I like him only because simply my dad's name was Herman, so Work. just, you know, nice. name alone, um, but I think he is going to be an interesting character to watch as well. Um, I think he has the potential to start off strong and try to play hard. He has that potential that I, I see. It. it might be completely wrong. He can be very low-key. But I think because he wants to play hard and he wants to – he already literally said, I want to win HOH week two. So I think he has the potential to play hard, and that could rub people the wrong way. Yeah, I feel like I'm kind of lukewarm on Herman. Um, just re kind of watching his video um, introduction and the bio, um, he comes off very abrasive with a very big ego um and I, I think that might rub people the wrong way i'm kind of hoping he might just be playing that up for the video um just to kind of get noticed but you know he's a salesperson he talked a lot about how many trips he goes on and how much money he makes and i just don't know if a lot of people are going to relate to him right off the bat i think he might have a hard time fitting in right away um but again hopefully he's just playing that up and he's able to kind of integrate with everybody well that first night. Yeah. I feel like for people that know BB Can, I feel like he might end up with like Jesse syndrome. <clears throat> where Jesse on BB Can 6 went in very, very confident and then was like third boot. So <laughs> I don't know. And like I like Jesse, so I shout out to you, Jesse. But yeah, his his bio is very interesting. He said that the most spontaneous thing he's ever done is flying to Edmonton on a private jet to watch an Oilers game and fly back the same night. <sighs> so I will say he, his personal accomplishment that he's most proud of was owning two houses by 27, which like yeah. is very impressive. Like mm -hmm. I have to, like I have to give him that. And then as far as his rapid fire, it's all the things you would expect from someone of his archetype. Uh, hero, comp beast, no food. Uh, he wants to rely on intellectual and physical skills, but probably physical strength. Uh, stay true to his word, using his gut instinct, and he's open to a showmance. I feel like he has perfect showmance bait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I, I have a really random prediction when we get to who I think he's going to end up at a showmance with. J.C. Lynn. No. Actually, <laughs> it's not J.C. Lynn. Um, there's someone else that I feel like matches his abrasive personality. <laughs> we'll talk about her later. But, um, no, I really like Herman. I think. Yeah. I think I'm as long like... as he can reel it back a little. And I feel like it's good to be proud of your accomplishments. And, like, you should be able to talk about those. But maybe just don't come across it too braggy because I don't know if other house guests will appreciate that, especially when they're like thinking of who they want to make it to the end and vote for. I think tell you might want to be keep. Yeah, yeah, tell the tell tell Canada, tell the viewers. Tell don't us, tell your house guests. Yeah, yeah, because exactly. If they, if you tell the house guests, they're not keeping you in that game because they're like, what you need the money for? Bye. You can go. Exactly. It's so funny that he brags about how much money he makes when Tauruses are traditionally like 
not super materialist. At least I'm not. Yeah. But Well, anyway. I think he comes from humble beginnings and he talks yeah. a lot about how hard he worked to get where he was. So I think that's probably a big part of it. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Yeah. All right. Speaking of JC Lynn, there she is. 24. She, her pronouns. She's a Libra from Thunder Bay, Ontario. She's one of like eight people, I think, from Ontario. But mm -hmm. the other seven are all from Toronto. It's like clearly they did a big casting for Virgos from Toronto because there's like four <laughs> of, like right. four people that are Virgos from Toronto. That's um, what the casting call said. Virgos in Toronto, come apply for oh, BBC. Are you a Virgo? Do you live in Toronto? <laughs> come play Big Brother Canada. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she is a social media manager. She is single. Her strategy is to use her endearing and empathetic personality to create strong connections with both sides of the house. Uh, she wants to create a four-person alliance with those that she trusts the most. And if a showmance presents itself, she'll go for it if she feels it's real or benefits her game. Y'all dive into Miss JC Lynn. All right. Um, okay, so JC Lynn, um, based on her video, she grew up figure skating her whole life. So very competitive. Um, I don't, I've seen a lot of people aren't super high on her, but based on her videos, I thought that she came across uh, very like friendly and personable. And so I think that that might go well for her. Um, she is kind of looking to get into showmance though, so that could hit or miss for her. Um, but overall, I really liked her. She is a super fan of the show, which can play to her advantage as long as she doesn't rely on that too much or play too far too fast. But yeah, I think she has an okay chance, but I don't know if she'll make it too, too far. So since I didn't get to see the videos like that, because you know, mm -hmm. we're not in Canada and I don't get to see those videos. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I didn't get a chance to watch and see what, you know, what she said and how personable she felt. But like reading her bio, she came across, she definitely came across as somebody who's very competitive. So hearing that yeah. she's a figure skater, I'm like, makes sense. Okay. Um, she thinks about, um, you know, making these alliances and working with people and being empathetic and, and, endearing and yada 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 but i feel and i could be totally wrong she's giving me best vibes and says. <laughs> she's yeah. giving me best vibes uh, and i'm just like oof i cannot take another season of best because Beth made me want to choke no. Beth. And I was like, oh my God, I ain't uh -huh. never want to choke somebody as much as I want to choke this girl right now. So, but, um. We do not condone physical violence against Big Brother House guys. No I'm kidding. I guess we, <laughs> look, maybe we do, maybe we don't. I don't maybe know. Maybe we do. <laughs> well, I don't know. We, it I just, doesn't matter. I just know. She just gave me, she just gave me some vibes that I'm not like vibing with yet. But like any game, I am always open to change my mind about people. Uh, my preseason and preconceived ideas about them do not carry into the game unless they show me that. So I'll be watching you, JC Lynn, and making sure you're not giving off those best vibes. If the showman's happens, I wouldn't be surprised. I would rather it yeah. not. I would rather it not. For anybody, not just her, but for anybody, I would love a season with no showmances. Like, yeah. rely yeah. on your own ability to play the game. Get, build alliances. You know, but it don't have to be a, a showman. It could just be, hey, we just rock with each other. We vibe. You good? You 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 you're my counterpart. Like, mm -hmm. I would love a no showman's, but I don't think it's. I think it's not. I don't think it's gonna happen. This season. I think showman's Always at least one. <laughs> at least one. We go catch well, somebody kissing in the in the, in the you know somewhere, and then Big Brother will pounce on that like a tiger. Yeah. Well, the difficulty with Canada too is like showmances in Canada don't have like the negative connotation that they do in the U S like a, a lot of winners have won the game being a part of some sort of showmance as Ugh. like wild as it is. Um, so when I heard her name, I immediately thought of Miss Congeniality. <laughs> um, I which is my Jamie Lynn Spears. Absolutely not. That Absolutely not. We don't acknowledge that woman here. In I this, know. I in was like, podcast, ooh, but. that's a name. And <laughs> no, I realized no, it's different. 
I, I went immediately to Miss Congeniality because it's my favorite movie. I love um, that movie. Yes. <laughs> I, was like, I love that movie so much. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I think I want to like her, maybe. But the difficulty is she reminds me of every single white girl I went to high school with. And so, like, that's the difficulty is, like, she just reminds me of everyone. And I didn't like most of them. So it's, like, I just... Like, her answers seem perfectly acceptable and lovely. And it seems like she's a fan, at least maybe a little bit. So oh, She's a super fan. Yeah, she's a she's super, a super fan. fan. Oh, oh, is she? Yeah. I mm-hmm. did not see that, nor did I Self-proclaimed. hear Self-proclaimed. Anyway. We don't know how much of a super fan, but says super fan. <laughs> Who level. said they were a super fan on CB? Oh, fuck, Chris Kirkpatrick. <sighs> I have to bring him up Back again. yourself I'm so and you're a super fan. Super fan and fans are two definitely different things. You are not a super <laughs> fan if you watched a couple of episodes and only episodes. If you have not sat up all night and watched live feeds all night yeah. long, then you are not a super fan. You are a casual mm-hmm. and accept yeah. that. Like I watched yeah. the edited edited programs. I let CBS or a uh, global. Mm-hmm. Tell me how I should feel with these edited, <laughs> watered down versions of the show. So you are a casual fan. But if you are sitting up at four o'clock in the morning when you know you got work in the morning and you should not be watching, but you are watching these live feeds and you are watching the drama go down as it is, and you know every HOH winner and veto comp winner before the episode even airs. Then, my friend, you are a super fan. My, my like, mark of a super fan, I go even, like, one step beyond that. Because, like, live feed viewer is, like, great and lovely and wonderful. And obviously, like, I've stayed up till 4 a.m. when I know I have work the next day. My thing is, like, if you've ever turned on live feeds and just watched mm-hmm. these house guests do the most mundane yeah. things... You're a super fan. Brushing yeah. their teeth and washing, cleaning up the house. Doing laundry. Mm-hmm. Like, that's when Absolutely working nothing. out for hours on end because it's the only thing you can do in the house. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah. the Big Brother Canada house. You're lounging by the pool. Lounging. Yeah. Just lounging. Oh, the hot tub. Oh, I thought, oh, I just thought Sleeping. of the hot tub fight. Oh, I thought of the hot tub fight from last year. Oh, you signed up for this. <laughs> I love Victoria. God help me. Okay. <laughs> JC Lynn, prove us wrong, girl, or get in a showman's and be Beth 2.0. Who knows? Anyway. I will tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. So happy. Okay. This starts the series where of uh, me being very happy two house guests in a row. So this is Jay. Uh, they are 28. They're a Virgo from Toronto. The first of many. Yeah. Um, unless Betty was the first. I think Betty actually was the first. So in a series, uh, they're a theater director. They are single. Their strategy is that they're a friendly person. They're going to use their charm to make people not see them as a threat. And as a director, they see themselves pulling a lot of strings. Now, obviously, I'm very excited because as a non-binary person myself, the fact that we have two they, them people in the house, truly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Arissa Cox. Because BBUS could never. And, like, the fact that there is this representation in this house. There's not as much queer rep that I know of as last season. Last season, we got spoiled with five out of 14. Uh, This season, I think it's three out of 16, but nevertheless, I'm still happy. I think it's more than that. I I don't know the exact amount. I know three for sure. Yeah. But who knows after that? Nevertheless, I love Jay, period. (laughs) Yes, I'm so excited for Jay. Um, Their intro video was just so much fun. Um, They talked a lot about their cat, which I love. And one of the quotes in the interviews was that they're going to treat all the house guests like their cat, pet them, treat them well, and feed them well. And I think that is an amazing strategy for this game. And if anyone treated me as well as I treat my cat, they'd be a friend for life. So... (laughs) Um, I'm very excited to see Jay play. Um, 
they said that they'll be the flirt of the season and also that um the only thing that slightly concerned me is in the interview they said that they don't want to eliminate friends but they will and that always concerns me with people because I feel like everyone says that they will eventually but I think if you're already feeling that way before the house when you get in there meet with everyone you'll really feel that way so that's the only thing I'm slightly concerned about but Jay seems super fun super personable and I'm excited to see them play yeah, I, I I agree. You know what I'm saying? That backstabbing is it's something he's good at, but you got to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Hopefully he remembers that when he gets they. in the house. They remember that when they get in the house. Give me a second to correct myself, Logan. Don't jump on me the second I say it. Good Lord, man. Jesus. Sorry. You're like the Bayden police. I, I sure am. am. I sure am. Well, slow your roll, brother, because okay. I'm trying to get my life together. I will get okay. it. Okay. <sighs> they. <laughs> <laughs> they. I want them to go into the house and just be themselves and have a good time because they seem like such a fun person. And, like, the fact that they were, like, using their job like i'm a director so i'm gonna use it you know pull it by the strings and blah 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 i love that and i think if they just go in there be themselves people are going to love them people are going to just want I, he seems like that kind of person that people just want to be around and so mm-hmm. i think he had they have the potential to go far in this game but they also have to realize at some point they're going to have to be backstabbing. They're going to have to cut people because you can only take one of your friends. And I think they are going to have some many friends in this house. And um, as I, one thing that does concern me though about them, I feel like they might be too nice. And sometimes yeah. people that are too nice in this game gets trampled over by the people yeah. who know the assignment and come in with the assignment ready to go. Like, I don't, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to win this money. And I don't want them to get put in a situation in that category where people are like, he's ex- they are expendable. I don't want them to become expendable to people. So hopefully yeah. they can just get you know do what they got to do in order to make it far i think they're going to be very entertaining in the house i think they're going to light live feeds up um i'm i'm predicting a big brother show happening where jay is the director and they are telling the cast Mm -hmm. what to do and we're going to get a play on live feeds and possibly Uh on the on the episode so yeah that's what I'm hoping for anyway. So we'll, we'll talk about summer in a bit, but I feel like summer and Jay will be hosting the like talk show for feeds. Mm, like that's just yeah. an early prediction or Jay and Jessica or like some combination of them. Okay. Um, but yeah. So as far as their rapid fire questions, they said uh, hero, comp beast, no sleep, intellectual skills, staying true to their word, gut instinct. And it is a no man's for them, which mm. I mean, it is fair because there are uh, two queer masculine leaning people, Mm -hmm. but one of them is literally in a relationship. So, of course, there's no possibility for a queer showman. That's the only one that I will allow (laughs) is like the only one I will tolerate is if it's uh, like, honestly, my biggest thing is like, just put another queer person in the house. If I'm in the Big Brother house, I don't care. I'll make it work. Like, I will be in a showmance if they're single. I don't care. Like, <laughs> but no, I'm very excited for Jay. Yes. Um, two things before we move off of Jay. Um, mm-hmm. Their quote of one thing that they're proud of, I think, or one thing that is their biggest strength. Um, they said leading with joy, which I just love. And I feel like Aww. that's going to definitely be something that they bring into the house. And the other thing is they are a pole dancer or do pole dancing as their hobby. And so that I just wanted to point out like pole dancing is like very, very difficult. And it takes mm-hmm. a lot of upper body strength. Mm-hmm. And so I think that Jay is going to be another person um, who might be underestimated for their physical capabilities, which would be good. 
bring on the wall comp, please. That yeah. ring is going to stand <laughs> there. That he, they are going to stand there forever. Or one yeah, of those, right? the swinging the one. Fir- the first HOH like holding up a bucket challenge. Like, right, was, hello. Oh, the, they would the make sw- a great first HOH. I'm calling it now. I would love to see that. I think they did it. They did it last season. What the swinging? Oh no, the um, the holding up a barrel. That was the first oh. HOH last season because mm. it was the only HOH Julie Vu got to compete in. Mm. Should have been a flop. That's so sad. Well, whatever. I mean, you're not wrong, but also I'm not. I love Julie Vu. <laughs> I love Julie Vu. Anywho, Jay, we love you. I'm so excited for them. Period. And we're going to stay excited. <laughs> because next up is Jessica, 35. They use they, she pronouns. They are the other, they are the other Taurus. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't remember who the other Taurus was. They're the other Taurus from Cranbrook, Cranbrook, BC. They're a visual artist. That's the other big thing is there's a lot of artists in the house. Yeah. Which as an, art, as an art history person, I love so on board for uh they are married their strategy is to be fluid and flexible reacting in a way that to create the fewest repercussions and be a support system for as many people as possible i have to say on paper jessica is the most impressive of the 16 house guests to me okay well uh they it seems like a it seems like they're a really good fan and my big thing is, like, if I were to ever get into the Big Brother house and mm-hmm. I got this, like, bio-whatever strategy, being the super fan that I am, my strategy would always to be, it would be to always be as flexible as I possibly can. And people that recognize that going into, into the game of Big Brother, I sincerely appreciate them. Mm-hmm. Um, there was there were a couple other things in their bio that I was really impressed by as well. It does seem like they are a very big fan. Um, so I will say the part of the BB can experience they said would be the hardest is defining the difference between intuition and paranoia. Mm. Mm. I, it really seems like they are a like student of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I'm on board. Yeah, um, I know Jessica um, is definitely a super fan of the game. They said that they had seen every season and their spouse was also in another podcast chat, um, like talking about Jessica and how oh. much they watched the show. So definitely yeah. a super fan. Um, one of us for sure. Right. Um, I agree with you, Logan. The one thing that really stood out to me about this bio was being fluid and flexible. Um, I think it's good to come in with a game plan, but you really need to be able to adopt in this game. You can't Mm -hmm. dedicate yourself to one strategy. Um, Another thing you pointed out, I was also going to say about the difference between paranoia and intuition. Mm -hmm. To me, that shows that they are very self-aware because I feel like that's not something people consider enough. And that's probably the biggest downfall of people's games is being mm-hmm. paranoid when they don't need to be um so yeah i'm i'm very excited to see jessica play and i think out of all the the super fans on this season i think jessica is probably going to be the most representative of us uh yeah i agree i think she they will um i could have said she when i'm changing yep. my thing it's she <laughs> right there in front of me but um yeah i think that she will be like the kind of fan that I always want to see go into the Big Brother house because the super fans who go into the Big Brother house and they play so hard right out the gate because they want to experience everything that they've seen on TV and they want to do everything. I want to be HOH. I want to experience everything that Big Brother has to offer. And in doing so, they rub the house guests the wrong way because they are so intense. And I mean, we saw that with somebody on Big Brother 23. I don't want to name him, but we all saw the harder you fall because you are such a huge fan of the show. You feel like you have to do everything so quickly. But I feel like Jessica is going to be that kind of person who um, like they understand that you have to be fluid. You have to be flexible. You have to understand that, that Everything is no not a reason for you to get paranoid. Sometimes you just have to take the moment and use your intuition that you 
no, you automatic you already have and use it for good. Like we can't just be like not trusting anybody because you don't, you know, it's I feel like she's the kind of work person who will pause, pray, and proceed. Why? <laughs> When things start getting crazy, she'll be able to take a breath, relax, figure it out, and not, you know, fall into the rabbit hole of paranoia. Because once you're in that rabbit hole, you're you're not coming out. And yeah. that's the quickest way to get put out of the house. So yeah. I have good feelings for her. And I want yeah. great things for her in this house. I'm definitely rooting for her in this house, yeah. which is interesting because you know me. I don't always go for the... For the quirky um, uh, <laughs> women who you don't just, ever, I don't usually ever do that. But something about her, them, they, all of that is something endearing that she has a quality that she has about her, and I am definitely rooting for her this season. Like, if I were to sculpt an ideal Big Brother contestant from scratch, it would be Jessica. Like, mm. honestly. Um, like everything I would want, like super fan, queer, like self-aware, like all of like everything artistic, like all the things that I would want in an ideal mm -hmm. house guest is Jessica. And so I'm very, very excited for them. Um, I do want to highlight as well as the queer rep on the podcast today. Um, they did also mention in their bio that they want to be representation for two very misunderstood groups of the 2S LGBTQIA plus community, uh, being both non-binary and bisexual. Okay. Um, which I couldn't agree with more. Um, I cannot speak for being bisexual. Uh, I can speak a little bit for being non-binary. <laughs> um, and I do definitely agree with everything that they're saying about that. Um, I am... I just am so excited. I want them to do so well. I just, please, for the love of God, let them do well. <laughs> like, whatever whatever higher power you believe in, believe for Jessica to them. <laughs> I'm sure people are probably catching on by now, but I, I love a good quote. And Jessica also said that their family would describe them as loudmouth, big heart, clever mind and steady hand and i'm just like yeah like everything you want in a big brother player mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. truly because she looks she's they seem like somebody who is go keep they cool about themselves but if you push them and get you know push them to that point they will let you have it and i she love is. that i she's a, that, she's a taurus we get hard-headed mm -hmm. like <laughs> That's what you, I feel like that's what you need in a big brother house. You need to be able to not, you need to defend yourself and you definitely need to speak up for yourself and not be anybody, you know, play anybody else's game. But you also need to know when you have to reel that in. So, and I think Jessica knows when to do it and when she needs to pop off. So I'm excited. Yep. Very, very excited. We're just going three queer people in a row because next up is Josh. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize that was the order, so that actually makes me happy. But next up is Josh, 28. He, him pronouns. He's the only one that explained his full big three, which again, big fan of. Yeah, um, same. So he is a Virgo sun, Scorpio moon, Libra rising. Uh, I am also a Libra rising, so... That I'm gonna be very, I'm gonna be watching him for that. Uh, from Vancouver, BC, he is a pediatric resident in a relationship. His strategy is a lot, but uh, he wants to establish a strong alliance, uh, ideally with someone older, um, starting in a large alliance until closer to jury, separating uh, himself with big moves, keeping a close alliance and be a comp beast, but with enough charm to be less threatening. Mm -hmm. Hmm. He also really impressed me in this bio. Um, yeah. 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 I am. I'm obsessed with Josh. Honestly, I feel like on paper he is perfect. Like he has everything that screams winner of Big Brother Canada. And I think the only thing I'm a little bit worried for is he does remind me a lot of Ty from last season. And I think that 
that is good in a lot of ways, but I think a lot of people are going to be wary of it because Taiwan, um, that he might come out just naturally a big threat. Um, but just seeing his interviews, he seems extremely, extremely personable, um, very down to earth, which I appreciated. Um, yeah, I, he has a cat, so I love anybody who talks about their cats yes. and these things, but I think is going to be a threat, but very athletic, I think can probably get by, um, hopefully the first couple weeks, just being super personal. There's a lot of very athletic people in this cast. And so I think as long as he has that, um, that social connection that maybe the others won't have as strong of that'll get mm-hmm. him through for a while. And then by then it might be too late, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Josh right now. Yeah. I saw something in his bio or somewhere I heard about it where he was talking about how he's a pediatric resident, but his mom is in her first year yes. of med school. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I saw that. He uh, talked about it in his, um, his BB can interview and it was so sweet and I love it. And they want to um, eventually like go do like medical stuff together. And uh-huh. I just, I love it so much. Um, yeah. He also, he's one of the 11 siblings, right? Yeah. I believe so. 11- so yeah. Yeah. Um, as somebody with a lot of siblings, I feel like being stuck in a house with a lot of people, that's going to help a lot because mm-hmm. you have to deal with a lot of personalities and you usually fight with your siblings a lot. Right. So I feel like he'll have a lot of experience working through that. But I'm a yeah. little worried that he's too good to be true because I, I really, really like John. Right, right. Like his dream vacation is eating pasta in Italy or going to Dollywood. Like, yeah. hello. Um, he also talked about wanting to be remembered as bold and daring, um, but most importantly wants to be remembered as someone who wasn't afraid to make big moves, um, and difficult decisions. And he wants Mm -hmm. other queer, black, or indigenous youth or youth who grew up not having much to be able to relate to his experience and see themselves in him, which like uh, just goes along with what you were saying, Livy. Like he seems Mm -hmm. like a perfect, like, honestly, he's another example of like, perfect on paper the same honestly the same way that i feel about jessica like he just seems like a very very strong person who knows exactly who he is and is willing to be flexible enough um in the game and like you said he has 11 siblings he's gonna know Mm -hmm. how to navigate this game a lot better than a lot of other people do yeah he's also a fan of the game he mentioned which is good Okay. 11 I, siblings is where you came back. <laughs> a lot. So this man does not, he does not mind not having any privacy nope. because exactly. he never had any. So living in a house with all those people is not going to be something that's going to rattle him or annoy him or frustrate him. Yep. Um. So that's a good thing. I did hear what you said. I agree that he gives me very Thai vibes, but I love Ty. And so well, I, exactly. I think that's the problem is everybody loves Ty. And I think people are going to see that as a threat. Like that I, I agree. Out. I agree. Like Ty won. So we need to get him out. I, I think he, he's definitely going to have an uphill battle to navigate his way around it. But I think one, one thing about Ty and one thing that I hope Josh will have the same is their ability to be very charming and very, very but enough to make people trust him he had that thing yeah. about him that made people want to trust him and i feel like josh just by his bio and he i feel like he could be a charming individual like we said he has 11 siblings he doesn't mind sharing he doesn't mind being in space where you know people are always around some people are going to get annoyed like when you have like I'm I don't know how many people are like on this cast who are like um only child children or whatever, you know, don't have many brothers or sisters. That could get frustrating in a house with sixteen people and you're like everywhere I go is somebody and we've seen that people crack under the pressure of the big brother house because they don't have you know, they can't have the way they used to be. I don't think that we that's definitely not a problem for him. I just feel like I hope he can have the same kind of charm and personality that Ty had that'll take him far. I'm of course rooting for him because like I say I, I, at every reality show that I watch, I root for everybody black. 
I do all the time. Um, I want them to do well in yep. every season that they do. So I'm definitely rooting for Josh. Um, is him being close to, like Ty might be an issue for him? Sure. Of course. Because nobody wants the same thing twice. But you know, maybe lightning can strike twice. Who knows for Josh? This, well, this is the gay. This is the gay tie. It's fine. Right. They're different enough. But see, this is the um, thing. This is the thing. Wait, before we just jump past that, this is the gay tie. Everybody wanted to make Ty gay last season anyway. Everybody was like, Ty's definitely bi. Ty's queer. He's not. He's definitely. <laughs> so now people. You get what you ask for. You get another yep. version of Ty, but he's completely queer and he's happy mm -hmm. about it. So just let the man live his best life and y'all can enjoy watching him. And I think he's kind of hot too. So oh, he's so <laughs> he's hot. definitely kind of hot. Yeah. I feel like that that tie issue is probably really only going to be super prevalent the first couple weeks. But mm -hmm. yeah. just watching all the videos, I think Josh really comes off as extremely genuine and very down to earth. And so I, I do think he'll overcome that very quickly. Just um, like Ty. Yeah, exactly. And so it's like you just need to get your foot in the door and mm -hmm. then you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And I think I can't remember if it was him or not, but somebody said they wanted to win the first HOH. I don't think it's him. Oh, it that's is, not him. I know who yeah. you're talking about. We'll talk if about. If he did win first HOH, I think that would solidify him to the end game, yeah. probably. Yeah. Uh, his rapid fire also, he said, hero, comp beast, no sleep, physical strength. Um, initially, stay true to your word, but backstab later. Gut instinct. And he wants a best friendship mance. His okay. words, not mine. Um, uh, he wants a tie and um and Jed. And Jed, he wants, he wants that. He wants that bromance. And look, anybody in his situation with the obstacles that we've just said coming into the door, mm -hmm. he needs that bromance. He needs those connections where he can be like, all right. And like you said, if he doesn't win that first HOH, maybe his bro can win the next the first HOH and he's good. He just needs yeah. a couple of weeks, like you said, to just get lay his low. footing in the house <laughs> and lay low and let people forget about the tie of it all. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Well sure. we could just well we could just be making that up and nobody's even thinking about him looking like Ty right? like that. We honestly, could just be putting that out there. <laughs> It honestly depends on what seasons they're showing them in quarantine. That's honestly, true. Like, and I think they would show last season to me, like because that was a really good season. I think like, if I if I had to pick two seasons, I would probably pick. Honestly, I would pick nine, mm -hmm. and then I would probably pick five. Well, five is difficult because it's half that, right? But that's why I love it. But okay, fair. I would maybe say two. Two's good. Two, Two is a is really good, good season. Two is... <sighs> two, would, two or three. I really like three, but I know I'm in the minority of that. I don't I don't think I even watch three, but two, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, well, Josh, they, good luck for you, bro. Very that. Good luck. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Jacobs. Jacobs. Oh, boy, <laughs> Jesus. Here we go. Kevin Jacobs, 28. He is an Aquarius from Toronto. He's not a Virgo from Toronto, but he's an Aquarius from Toronto. He is a sales engineer. He is in a relationship, a long-term, madly in love relationship. Good for you. His strategy, lie, cheat, and steal to pit the other house guests against each other. Be the snake in the grass. Make him laugh as I stab him in the back. I know I'm in a minority of the internet opinion. I really like him. He got first boot written all over him. What are you like talking about? Second, he's out. A hundred percent, but I like him. I you know, Kevin is a super fan as well. Um, talked about being all on the feeds, all the podcasts. I'm sorry, but Kevin reminds me of French Fry from last season. <laughs> I, I don't see it going well. Not that. Oh. Not French I Fry. I don't Eddie, think he's going to make it far. I think no. he's going to come in cocky, like, way too messy. And again, I'm hoping maybe he's just playing it up because he knows this is what we want to see to get cast. But in I don't terms, think all he so. I know. I don't he think so. And all he talks about is being a villain and being smart and competitive. 
And I feel like it's fine to be a villain, but it's all he talked about. I feel like there wasn't any depth in anything you saw. And I feel like if we can't see that depth in you, I don't know how well you're going to connect with other people. And I don't think he's going to be able to make those connections. I don't think he's going to have the agency in this game to be an actually good villain. Nobody's going to take him seriously unless he comes out the gate, like winning comps left and right. And, you know, making moves right out the gate. It's just something about this man. (sighs) As soon as the picture popped up for him, I was like, that man is a first boot written all over him. And, and I don't like, I'm not one to talk about people's appearances, but that haircut is, I was going to say, oh my God, like, just shave it off already. It's just, I don't know. I don't see him going far. If everything he talks about is just, I want to be a villain, 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 villain. Um, and I don't think he's going to have the agency. Now we could be a hundred percent wrong. He can come in that game and slay. And guess what? We'll look back at this conversation. Uh-huh. Like, I guess we were no, wrong we're about not. that, but I don't think this man is 28 years old Calling in this house with all these people, some of these people are 34, 48. I just don't see him because I think he's going to focus so much on being the villain that he's going to lose focus on that he actually needs to play the game. Yeah, and I think that's what we see in the interview is that we don't see anything about him except being a villain. And to be a good villain, you need to be able to show yourself as being charming and charismatic before you stab people in the back. And it seems like this is all he has. This is the only thing that we're planning on seeing. He says he's going to be a snake in the grass as he snakes, stabs him in the back. But I think, I think everyone's going to see through it immediately. Yeah. I don't, I just, I don't, I don't have high hopes for Kevin Jacobs. Now, if we come back at the end of the season and he won, I'll apologize. Oh, yeah. I would apologize then, but right now. Well, right. I guess he doesn't do anything that makes me really angry. All the time. <laughs> yeah, I, so I, I think we can kind of infer where his rapid fire answers were going, but just in case yeah. you needed clarification, uh, he's a villain, shocker, uh, comp beast. He says sleep is for the weak. Um, he's the lying on his, me. Literally. Um, he's relying on his intellectual skills. He wants to backstab people, uh, basing stuff on pure intellect. And he says, no, Mance, I'm an adult and I'm taken. Oh, I don't know. There's just something about this enigma of a man that, like, he's probably going to go home first. But, like, I am going to be so entertained by him and I already know it. Like, also, I'm excited to yeah. just see him crash and burn. I have a feeling, too, because he said um, he's so smart. He has a high IQ. He's the smartest person in the room. And if anyone seems smarter, then he's going to be super competitive. And I think that the fact that Josh is a doctor alone is going to make him, like, want to go after Josh. And so we might immediately see, like, sort of a feud. And then because Josh is more personable, I think the house will go that way. So Absolutely. we'll see. <laughs> That's my prediction, though, is that uh, he's going to be, like, going after Josh immediately. <laughs> let's move on, because I think the next person we have to talk about is way more exciting than Kevin. Yeah. Because, I think, alphabetically, yeah. Kyle Moore! <laughs> we yes. did it, y'all! We <laughs> got someone cast on Big Brother! <laughs> Crazy. God help us. <sighs> this is good old the real Kyle Moore. Mm-hmm. The other one is now the fake Kyle Moore. This is the real Kyle Moore. He is 23. He is a Virgo from Halifax, Nova Scotia, not from Toronto. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is a podcaster. Ha. Go check out his podcast. Uh oh, it's Life's a Something. I don't remember. Life's a wreck. Life's a wreck. Thank yeah, you. and it's a mental yeah. health podcast. It's oh, so cool. good, by the way. Like, I started listening to it, like, when he was... We'll talk about the Kyle more of it all. But his podcast is great. Um, his strategy is that originally he wanted to be overlooked. But he realized his skill set is better served by approaching the game like chess. Move first, attack in the middle, castle early. And he wants to win the first HOH to set yeah. the board. Mm. Now, if you don't know the relevance of Kyle Moore, 
we are here to educate you because last season when uh, ignorant white man that we don't speak of got ejected from the game, thank you, Canada, he was replaced by Kyle Moore and Twitter did its thing before we even had a photo of Kyle Moore from BB Can 9, found this Kyle Moore who also is from Canada and blew up his mentions overnight talking about how he was on Big Brother Canada. He was not. There was another Kyle Moore announced to be on the season, but we turned him into a Big Brother Canada fan. Mm -hmm. And we ultimately are the reason he is on this show. It is so wild to me. I thought it was a joke. When I saw the cast announcement, I was like, there's no possible way. Like, Arissa knows about this. And I think because Arissa knows, because she's in tune with us, that's why Kyle Moore got cast. Oh, most definitely. Arissa was very much following along with this whole Kyle Moore fiasco. And the fact that they found a different Kyle Moore, blew up his mentions, said he was on Big Brother, when he wasn't, had no knowledge of anything, just the name Kyle Moore, which is a very generic name, by the way. <laughs> yes. So, Twitter found this man and was like, you're on Big Brother Canada, way to go. And he's like, what? I have, I have no idea what you were talking about. But the other Kyle Moore, who did end up on the show, <sighs> was wow. a huge disappointment. And was like, we don't like this cow more. Bring the other cow more in. <laughs> and literally. And they did. And they did. And yeah. because Arissa is a fan of the show and is a fan of Twitter and understands at, as an executive producer, you need to listen to what the fans want. Yeah. And at that moment, Kyle Moore, this Kyle Moore, was who they wanted. And so the fact that they cast him this season is gold. Um, I really hope he goes into the house and takes this opportunity to be a good Kyle Moore because we've had enough of, we had enough of flop Kyle Moores, Kyle Moores that are horrible people that we don't like. So Kyle Moore, Twitter is rooting for you. I Kyle will- I will never root for a straight white man more in my entire life <laughs> than I will be rooting for Kyle. I'm about to, and that is saying right? something because Logan does not root for straight white men a lot. So not normally, no. That's so. I, 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 honestly, what was who was the last white man I rooted for? I was trying to think if there was a straight white man. Oh, Chris Kirkpatrick. Mm-hmm. I got on board with him eventually. Go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it, was, like I said, it wasn't right at the gate, and but he was short himself. So. <laughs> but no, I'm trying to think who are the other. Oh, I liked um, Christian last season. Okay. Yeah. 23 Christian. It's yeah. very rare, but like. Mm-hmm. It happens. <laughs> the, thi- the difficulty I'm having is this cast photo, Lana will know, reminds me of Derek from BB Can 6. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm pretty sure Derek's cast photo was in a denim button down shirt. Like, I would bet good money it was a denim button down shirt in his cast photo. I don't like being reminded of that. I don't like being reminded <laughs> of that. We remember Kayla. We don't remember Derek. Um, yeah. But he, like, truly became a fan because of us and mm-hmm. mentions it yeah. in his bio, which I loved. Um, his rapid fire, he um, he said, hero, comp beast, no sleep, intellectual skills, staying true to his word, gut instinct, and a no man's. And the biggest thing I got from his interview that I watched was that he was like, absolutely not. There is not a chance in the world I will get in a showman's. Absolutely not. I will maybe flirt with someone, but if there's a possibility, I don't care if it's the most gorgeous woman in the entire world, I will not get in a showman's. Uh, Famous last words of those who will actually get into a show. Well, match. he, he so, did say that as well. <laughs> he even brought up that he was like, "I bet Jed and Beth said the same thing when they were in here mm-hmm. last season, and look what happened." Mm-hmm. And I was like, God. "Kyle Moore, right?" <laughs> I know. I'm just. I'm so excited to see Kyle play. I think what's really unique about him is that he wasn't really into the show at all before he got discovered, and so. 
through last year, he learned a lot about the game. He interacted with a lot of people in the community and I believe past players as well. And so I think part of that winning the first HOH in his bio has to do with originally he wasn't planning on doing that. And he probably talked to people and learned the meta of the game and was like, oh, now he needs to do that. So yeah. I think there's a lot of upside to him. He's extremely likable. Um, you know, he said, and in his introduction video, it showed his Instagram story from the day after um, mm -hmm. the Kyle Moore stuff happened last year. And he said like, oh, I guess Big Brother Canada, you need to like, cast me next year. And like, he's been preparing ever since. He's been training, being very athletic. Um, he's a rock climber. And he's been catching up, I think, on past seasons. I don't know how in depth he's gone, but even just talking to other people who know about the game, I feel like um, is going to give him an advantage here without being um, like the typical fan that comes in, knows too much, and maybe overplays. He's I, very nice to look at, so I'm excited. Yeah. He also comes off very genuine and trustworthy. Um, another thing he noted um, is that he's very open and he doesn't want to close himself off. And so part of the reason he's on here is because he was open to – the opportunity and the craziness that happened last year. And as long as he plays the game that same way, then I think he's really going to benefit. I found it interesting though. He, when they asked his question, what do you, th why do you think you were selected to be on BB can? Like I wanted him to say, because people thought I was Kyle Moore from last season, but he was just like, no, I think I was selected because of my openness and the fact that I'm very publicly embraced all of what, and who I am through my advocacy for mental health. That's all well and good, but that is not why you're in the house. Just come out and say, I'm in this house because the Twitter Kyle Moore me. of it all situation last season happened and it was not, it was weird and crazy. And now I'm here. Like, embrace that. I know he did, to be but fair, I'm going to they wouldn't like, Big Brother Twitter wouldn't have liked him so much if he wasn't so big on mental health. So, <laughs> that's like, a hard. round way of doing it. But, it's definitely the fans that did it. So. Right. Say the fans. At least say the fans. And the fans. Like, all that. Right. And the fans. Well, he says it He says it later. Um, it, the most spontaneous thing I've ever done. When a bunch of BB Can fans thought I was Kyle from BB Can 9, I played into it and went along with the narrative. So he does mention it at one point, but Lana, I completely agree with you. Like, he's on here because we found him. Because mm -hmm. his name is Kyle Moore. And he's mm -hmm. a mental health podcaster. Like, Mom's that's out. why you're there. Mm -hmm. um but nevertheless i'm very excited like this i can't wait to see how he plays because i genuinely like have no idea right we don't know this man we don't know if he was a good he gonna be a good player or what but you know, know what? he might really flop because mm -hmm. he could <laughs> put it up so high and <laughs> he's learned from some of the best like, I'm pretty sure Rob has a podcast had him on at one point last season. Yeah, he's, he was playing um, Among Us with, like, Puya and Taryn. Yep. So he, like, knows the community. <laughs> I hope for nothing but the best for Kyle Moore. Yeah. That's I all I'm going to say. Okay, I hope for nothing but the best for Kyle. But he is the one person and the only person, if he flops... I'll understand because this yeah. man was like plucked out of nowhere and yeah. threw into this house. And even if he studied one season, is that really, yeah. you know, yeah. but I hope nothing but the best, but if he does flop in his first boot it. or second boot, I'll be like, you know what, Kyle, it's fine. As long as you don't say nothing problematic, you're okay. Yeah, with that's, that's it. <laughs> um, also, I think it'll be interesting to see what other fans recognize him. And like mm. the lore behind it, Jessica. I, know, I feel like yeah. Jessica has to know. Well, Jessica and Kevin both, um, they follow Rob has a podcast, so they definitely know. And then some of the other people who are super fans, you don't even need to watch that podcast, but seen it all over Twitter. Mm -hmm. So it'll if be, I a, feel like, it, if there's a yeah. baby Twitter person that we just don't know about other yeah. than Kyle Moore, then we'll, we'll know. Yeah, and I feel like he benefits from the fact that the super fans will know who he is and be excited about it, but not be like, oh, this guy is also a super fan and we need to get him out. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. We could talk about Kyle more all day, but we got we more could. to get through. <laughs> we move on to Marty Frenette, 43. He's the oldest house guest of the season. Cast more older house guests, please. We would like to see it. But anyway, he is a Capricorn from Petit Rocher, uh, no, uh, New Brunswick. Sorry, getting my territories confused. New Brunswick. 
Uh, he is a fraud investigator. He is married. His strategy is to stay flexible, read and react to what is happening, win every comp. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. You can't physically win every comp because if you win an HOH, you can't compete in the next one. That you bothered me. It. <laughs> Not, oh God. Uh, be true to his word until it's time to make a move. Backstab if he needs to, but hopefully that happens later in the game. I was also very impressed on paper with Marty. Yeah, I was a big fan of Marty. Um, I think he comes across super well. Uh, he's a fraud investigator, which he says will play to his advantage in being able to read people. But he is planning on lying about that. Um, I saw on Twitter, and so I don't. He hasn't said a, like a backup for that, and so I'm hoping he has a good backup if he's going to lie he, about his. So job. he is. He is a hockey coach. Oh, so I so like feel that. like that's probably what he's going to uh, like fall on. Yeah. Um, I feel like being a coach as well, uh, I feel like it tends to just give people some kind of trait. I feel like where people want to follow you, they, you tend to mm -hmm. get along with a lot of people. So I think that'll probably play in his favor. Um, just like Jessica, he talks about staying flexible, which is super mm -hmm. important in this game. And he also claimed to be a big fan. So um, I'm excited to see Marty play. I want, I like, I like his bio. His bio was something that was, He's like he seems like somebody who's just a good have head on his shoulders. He's level headed. He probably won't freak out. Maybe I don't know what his temper is like. But being a fraud investigator, he definitely could read people and understand. Like, mm, you know, pick up on some vibes. So that's a good trait to have in the house. I hope he doesn't solely rely on that trait because sometimes we let that influenced everything and it, it might not be what it seems so i hope he'll be able to differentiate what you know what you know what's good what's bad every everybody's not a fraud so i hope he's well, in this game no <laughs> <laughs> he has he also has such an interesting story like okay. which which yeah. we piece together through his bio so he had a job i don't think he explains what the previous job was but got into a work accident, dealt with PTSD, and then in 2001, after his work accident, went back to school and completed everything from grade 10 up through his bachelor's degree, which got him the job being a fraud investigator, which oh, wow. I just find so interesting. Um, he is also... Uh, our French Canadian, which I always love, a French Canadian house guest. <laughs> um, I just think back to William and Dre, and I just mm -hmm, love, mm -hmm. love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, mm -hmm. He also yeah. mentions um, wanting to be remembered for playing great, not necessarily winning. He's like, my favorite players um, w most of the time didn't win, so he'd rather be a BB Cam legend. So I hope that means he brings the entertainment and some big moves. Yeah, I, I do fear, though, because I think the next, I, I I'm, as far as age is concerned, I hate bringing it up, but I think the next closest person to his age is, like, 32, and I yeah. think it's Tanisha, and I fear that, like, it could go one of two ways. He could either Rosina and be out first, or he could Karen and somehow integrate himself into this group of like because this isn't like a super young cast kyle is the youngest house guest but a lot of people fall around the like 27 to 29 so i feel like maybe he will have the ability to get in with the not the younger house guests but maybe like the the closer to 30 house guests and the house guests that are the few house guests we have that are over 30 um, like you said, Livy, he, he talked about being flexible and that stuck out to me as it does with anyone who mentions it. Um, because it seems like he just really knows who he is and where he wants to be in this game, but also like have that element of flexibility to do whatever he needs to do to win. Um, in his rapid fire, he says that he's a hero, a comp beast, uh, no sleep, he said he has intellectual and physical skills and calls himself a double threat, which I kind of loved. Uh, he wants to stay true to his word. He relies on pure intellect. And obviously he's married, but he would be down for a bromance. Yeah, which with Josh saying that he wanted to work with somebody older, mm -hmm. this could be a secret bromance. And maybe Josh and Marty would be a great alliance. Yeah. 
I would love that to see would, it. Because that is really the, the only thing, candidate for Josh. So Yeah. Marty did say his pet peeve was not making your bed in the morning. Um, so he would hate me because I can't even remember the last time I made my bed. <laughs> but I hope I hope that's something that he can get over quickly because I don't think that's going to be happening a lot. <laughs> I hope yeah. he doesn't turn into, like, the person that's cleaning the house all the time because there's always yeah. one person that, like – frenetically cleans like nobody's business i hope it's not him in that regard but yeah, yeah i'm excited for him i think he's got mm -hmm. a lot he's got a lot going for him on paper so we'll see melina oh boy i'm excited for melina <laughs> she's 29 she shockingly is a virgo from toronto and she's an artist she's all the things in one person <laughs> She is in a relationship, and her strategy, she says, you'll have to wait and see, but I will be the girl to make this a woman's game. Yes. I love it. I know. Love it. Period. Uh, sit. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm. She I also love. talked about wanting to win to use the money to adopt a little girl, and I was like, I love that. Yes, I love it. Like, like I've been wanting to adopt for so long, and like this would make it happen, and I was like, Oh, God. That's everything. Okay. She sounds like to me, and I, I hope I'm right, that she wants like the girls to get together, get a girl power woman's alliance for real, for real. Now, I don't know if this is gonna happen because you know how some women can be in these games. And I just feel like it might be one or two that is just like that in this game. But I want this to do well because, like, the fact that she's like, look, I want this this girl to make it a woman's game. Like, I'm here for that. I want to yeah. see Melina just do the doggone thing and, and kill it. And I hope even when she's doing it, like, she's fearless in doing it. I want to see a fierce yeah. woman be fearless in this game, not scared of what the boys might do or say like i don't i'm sick of seeing in the game where the women follow behind the men and like what do we do what do we do like i want to see a boss chick in this house like making the moves making the and being respected for her game I, i'm ugh, i'm sick of seeing women doing the same thing men do and get called a you know just being called a bitch and being called you know, oh, she's, you know, she's too aggressive I, to play. I was going to say, I hate using the word aggressive, but aggressive yeah, yeah. Well. she's too aggressive, but she's doing the same thing he's doing, mm -hmm. but he's the boss and he's just being in charge. I hate that. I want to see a boss chick in this house just doing what she do and being fearless and not giving a crap of what man, what anybody says, not a man or a woman, just leave. Or non-binary person. Or non-binary. Yeah. I don't care who you are. You, yeah. she, him, they, them. I don't care. Just be a boss. I want yeah. to see her be a boss. And I, I want her to win so she can adopt that, that little girl. Right. <laughs> I know. I, I really, really like Melina um, as a person. And she definitely seems like she's going to be that person who's not afraid to play and is going to be a boss. Um, I am a little concerned for her, though, because she talked a lot in her um, introduction video about not liking, like, pretty much everything and being a little annoyed by a lot of stuff. Yeah, she lives I alone. Um, oh. mm. um, she says she clashes with most people people and so i'm just a little concerned that like she's not going to get along with people and mm -hmm. she won't integrate herself very well but the, the bright side of that is that i don't think she'll care <laughs> exactly. she'll still like i think play really hard i just don't know if it's going to get her very far true um, yeah and also a lot of her answers to these questions were like her most prized possession were herself and like all these different things but it was it very blunt her, blunt yeah, was but the I best way it yeah. seemed not super self-aware to me um, I don't know if it's not aware or blunt, but I don't know. I really like her, though, and she seems very spontaneous and fun. I just don't know if she's going to gel with everybody else. Yeah, she yeah. might be an early boot because of her attitude, yeah. and which is okay. As long as she play hard, I love it. You exactly. know. Yeah, I, I can see her, like, playing really hard and going out, like, big, but probably, like, maybe third or fourth. Right. The, the, well, and the difficulty with Canada specifically is they always, or not always, but in the last few seasons, they tend to cast a very, I'm going to use the word brash, but I mean it in the most positive way. Yeah. They mm -hmm. cast a brash 
I'm going to say it as well, woman of color mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. always gets targeted early. I look Latoya. at Latoya. I mm -hmm. look at Min Lee. Mm -hmm. I can't. Oh, oh, first boot of BB Can 7. I love her and she follows me on Twitter. I don't remember her name. Oh, God. Oh, no. I feel so bad. Hold on. Um, but her as well. She was first boot. Like, they they tend to cast these, like, brash women of color that just don't do well in this game. I will. It, okay. Let's change the word. Because let's change please. it from brash to strong. Yes. Because okay, yes, that's what they are. They're strong women who mm -hmm. are fearless. They're fierce. Yes. But they don't mesh well with the other people because they make them uncomfortable. Yeah. And so when you make people uncomfortable, especially in a game like this, it you know, you, you don't tend to last long. And it's sad because they, they, they're they not being, like, rude. Like, even last season with LaToya, I didn't think she was doing anything no. that, for, that was, you know, wrong. Mm -hmm. It was just that she made certain people uncomfortable yeah. and so when you go into the houses like this as a woman of color or as a person of color anyway you always have to code switch yourself and unfortunately you can't be unapologetically you sometimes which is very sad to see but and I feel like Melina might be one of those people who don't know how to not be yeah. anybody but herself and yep. unapologetically herself. So I could see her going a couple of rounds, but I don't think she's going to go very yep. deep into this game if she continue, if she keeps up with the me, myself, and I mentality that she seems to have. Yeah. But I think she's going to be entertaining as I hell to yeah. watch. <laughs> and, and, and thank you for the adjustment of the word. I just yeah. genuinely couldn't think of a better word to describe. Mm -hmm. The person I was thinking of, by the way, Laura. Love Laura. Laura the Judge. Uh -huh. Um, but the, uh, uh, BB Ken Seven also had Kaylin, who went out third, being a strong woman of color. So it's like they just don't seem to do well in BB Can. Melina, break the curse, please, because I'm impressed with everything she has um, on paper. So mm -hmm. yes. Oh boy, we're here. Moose. It's Moose. It's Moose. <laughs> Where is Marsha? That is what I would like to ask. Where is Marsha the Moose? Oh, she's been gone for a season or two. I need Marsha the Moose. But regardless, we get Moose. Uh, he's twenty-four. He is a Pisces from Toronto. <laughs> Pisces represent. Yes, he is a content creator. He is single. His strategy is to befriend one or two people who he can trust the entire time and have them infiltrate other groups while keeping their alliance a secret. He's another person on paper that really impressed me. Uh -huh. um, he talks, like, it seems like if he's not a fan of the game, I don't remember if he is, but if, he, if he's not a fan of the game... It seems like he has the right set of skills to do well in this game. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, Moose is definitely one of our bigger personalities in the cast. Um, in his introduction video, he talked about being gutsy, loyal, very social. Um, he DJs, and he says that some, and he says like sometimes he might come on too strong. So I think that him being loud and outgoing is going to be good for him as long as he is able to kind of keep it in check with how everybody else is. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I think he's going to be the life of the party. And so I'm excited to see him. He's, I think, one of the younger people on the cast, um, which might make it a little bit more difficult for him. I kind of feel like all those, like, 28, 29-year-olds are going to really connect with each other with, like, maybe, like, Kyle being one of the younger ones, connecting with them. So I'm a little concerned about um, Moose, and then I think there's another girl who's a little young. So we'll see there. But he seems really fun, so I think I'm excited to see him. I, I feel like with him being a DJ, he knows how to, you know, work a room and work a crowd. And so I feel like he'll be able to read the room and understand, you know, what – you know, what vibe he needs to put out there today. Does yeah. he need to be, you know, loud and, and, and get the party started or do he need to be chill? So I hope because as, like as a DJ, you have to read the room. You have to know what music to play at the right time to get the yeah. crowd dancing or, or chill out. So I think he'll be able to read the room and understand the audience that he has 
and be able to create around that. I do, and I, I think, I also feel like he's going to be one of those charming people, like we talked about with Josh. He's one of these, so people who is, he's, he's single, he's up and he can flirt, and he can, he's young. So I think he's going to be, you know, just the life of the party. He's yeah, going to be sure. able to have a good time. And people are going to, I guess, I, I would think gravitate to be around him. But if he doesn't know how to rein it in, it might be too much for some people, especially like the older people. And mm-hmm. like you were talking about, like it's people 31, 32, 35, so him being 24, he has to know who he's catering to at the present time and be able to yeah. to either blend in when he needs to or, you know, get the party started when he has to. So yeah. I, I, I'm excited for Moose. And mm-hmm. with a, if you go come in the hell with a name like Moose, you better bring baby to On Big Brother Canada? <laughs> right? right. You better bring oh something. Goodness. You better bring what? something. I think compared to a lot of the other really big personalities, I don't think he's the biggest. And mm. so I think that that plays um, to his advantage a lot. Um, I think the only reason I was a little worried with him being young compared to Kyle, Kyle seems a lot more laid back. And so I think you're right with um, everybody else being a bit older, like their outgoing might be a lot different than his outgoing mm-hmm. being like out on the club scene. And so I think that'll be interesting to be like, is he too much or does he fit in with our like really outgoing having fun and so mm-hmm. it'll be one of the two and hopefully it's being able to connect with everybody yeah i also okay. one of the one of the questions that they ask is if you could only eat one thing in the house what would it be and most people's answers didn't really like scream out to me at all but moose said macadamia nut cookies and i just have to respect the hell out of that <laughs> because i personally love myself a white chocolate macadamia nut cookie um, so because of that, I will be rooting exclusively for Moose. Thank you very much. No I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, this is this is a tangent, but with that question, if you could eat one thing, two people said eggs. And I was like, what are the yeah, odds? Then and someone said else eggs. said eggs. Yeah, I was like eggs? That's I mean, like, I, mean, yeah, I, have, I feel like one person that maybe like I guess eggs, but like for two people to be like eggs, that's eggs. the one thing I'd eat. I was like, that's weird. Okay, so question. If you all could both eat one thing, what would it be? Would it cedar, be eggs? It would be cedar <laughs> salad, hands down. Ooh, that's a good one. One girl said pickles, and I would maybe do that. Ooh. <laughs> or I would somebody be... said pasta. I would, yes, I would go for pasta, pasta all day. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was like pasta, like mac and cheese. I can do mac and cheese all day long. Or, yes. or you know what? No, cereal. Just give me cereal oh, period. all I'm day. Pasta. I'll eat cereal all day long. I don't matter. Um, just, as long as I, I have different it. varieties of cereal, just all cereals. I would maybe broaden mine to just salad in general, because then like you could get your savory, you can get like you can add like strawberries to a salad and make it like sweet or whatever. But for me, like Caesar salad is my favorite food. Um, in fact, I'm probably gonna go make one after we finish this podcast, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, that mine would definitely be Caesar salad. Pasta or cereal. Pasta. Pasta or I feel cereal. like pasta's like still very good, versatile. Like, yeah. Because you add meat to it, sure. Because <laughs> that's the thing. Like, can I add stuff to it, or it's just got to be strictly pasta? If that, if it's strictly pasta and nothing else, then I'm gonna go with cereal. Yeah, sure. <laughs> moose, great. I'm very excited to see how moose integrates. Y'all, y'all said everything I was going to about moose. So let's move on, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I didn't realize she was next. Okay, we're here. It's Stephanie. <laughs> Is this who you thought would be in a show, man? Swiss? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's what I thought. So, she Failure. is 26. She's a Virgo from Toronto. Yes. Great. She's a child <laughs> and youth worker. She is single. Her strategy is social, social, social. Be everyone's friend and their shoulder to cry on, but never be afraid to use that against them when needed to help her game. Oh, I don't now, like that. I don't Lana, like that at all. I don't either. But Lana, you said you got Beth vibes from JC Lynn. Um, I yeah. got Beth vibes from Stephanie. Yes. I, yes, I get it too. See, when you said that, I was like, between the two, I feel like this is more Beth. So I was like, so I'm going to stick with liking JC Lynn for now. 
Sure. I like. I can see. I can see Beth in both of them, and which makes me what makes nervous. me nervous because, like, what if, right? That's what I'm about to say. What if they get together and actually like each other, and they team up, and it's like, oh my god! But I don't know. It's just I don't like that answer. I don't like to uh, uh, be a, a shoulder to cry on and use that against them. Like that's one thing in the, for me. Is disgusting. Like, why would you yeah. use something personal that somebody's telling you in confidence and then use it against them? It like, feels, I feel it feels very reminiscent of things that may or may not have just happened in a celebrity Big Brother house. Uh huh. Exactly. I, I'm exactly. really trying to give her the benefit of the doubt and hoping maybe she just worded it wrong. Like, be everyone's friends, make the connection, and then like use that against them, like, and then back them. I hope she doesn't mean the actual like content of the conversations because that is that's dirty. She does say she wants to be a villain. She's that's one true. of like yeah, three people that said mm. villain. So yeah, she probably said what she said. She was her whole entire introduction video was all just like parties, parties, clubs, always being out, um, and very over the top and outgoing. And she's another one to me that just really. Everything I saw just lacked a lot of depth. And I feel like a lot of people in their bios, you learn a little bit about who they are or where they come from. And if you can't put that in a bio, I don't know how you're going to connect with other people on a genuine yeah. level. And I feel like that's what you need in this game. I don't, I don't, I think she's that type of person. Like we, yeah. we have mentioned about Herman that you like, she's going to go in the house to talk about how much she parties and go, and yeah. nobody's going to want to take that to the end. Nobody's going to want to no. uh, reward her with money. If all you're doing right now is living the life. Some people don't even get a chance to live because they can't afford yeah. to live that life. Exactly. And you're coming in a house to play this game for whatever the prize. And you don't need it. So why it's, would I mm -hmm. let you go far? Because you're just going to go party, party, party. You can leave tonight and party, yeah. you know. I don't know. I don't. It, it's such a juxtaposition, too, because she's a child and youth worker. Like, that's what really gets me about her. Because if she was, like, business whatever, like, whatever, whatever. It's the fact that, like, you have to be a certain kind of person to work in <sighs> social work, working mm -hmm. with children like you have to be a certain kind of person and so that's like the one sliver of hope that i'm holding on to you know what that's true and hold on if she's a child and work youth worker she needs an outlet and partying is a way to for yeah. her outlet so mm -hmm. i'm not because i know a lot of people who work with the children and youth and and oh. and and when that it's a heavy job, it's a heavy position to be in because you get a lot of stories and things happening to these children that you just can't even imagine. Yeah. And so to be in that heavy situation, you need an outlet. And if partying and going out for her to these clubs is what's making, giving her that outlet so she can release the stress, then be able to refresh herself and then come back to work and you know do what she would have to do then okay i get it but it's still like giving an a perception of yourself in that bio that all we're getting is the perception of you that that's all you do is yeah. part right you, and you go out like yeah. you have i don't i don't know if the, the video says since we didn't get to see the videos but if she talked about her job or her you know what she did yeah. or was it all just party yeah it was pretty much all parties and clubs using her looks to her advantage flirting with the guys and so i'm i maybe she like because i said i don't think there was a lot of depth in there and she wasn't like opening up and being very vulnerable maybe she has to be closed off to that because of her job and hopefully hopefully mm -hmm this is what we're getting now and that when she gets in the house she'll open up and talk about her job but i i really think she's gonna be a hit or a miss here yeah yeah her and kevin give me very similar energy like they were the mm -hmm. two that i was kind of just like i'm unsure about like i said i'm holding on to the the small sliver of her work and the, like the the occupation that she's chosen for herself because again you have to be a certain kind of person to do that but i we'll see i'm I don't know. I'll leave yeah. it open. I'll I'll do what I did to Jamie, J, uh, Jamie, J, 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 J. C. Lynn. J. C. Lynn. I'll keep my open mind. I won't 
cast them aside right away, but I'll keep my eye on them because if she is just the same way as her bio is showing her in the house, then I can't, I can't get with that. But if she shows that she is, there's so much more to her and which I think it is. I, I like you said, can't nobody do the job you do as a child or youth worker and not have some kind of depth yeah. in you, or it's just, it's, it just doesn't work. Well, so. and you usually go into that probably because you have a lot of potentially like trauma or an experience that makes mm-hmm. you want to go there. And so yeah. that does close a person off. So. Yeah, we'll see. We'll keep an open mind for Miss Patterson. I'll see. Yes. But I hope it's not, it's good. Yeah, same. <laughs> it's Gino time. <laughs> oh boy. Steven Gino Genopolis. <laughs> yes, he is 28. He is a cancer from Laval, Quebec. He's a firefighter. Oh, oh. He's single. Uh, He's beautiful. Wait. Gorgeous. He's man's king. I'm uh, still calling it now. <laughs> wait. Truly. He is. <gasps> un- I oh. well, Livy, you don't have the contacts. Lana, he's the new Dimitri's. Oh, wait. I don't love Dimitri's. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's the new Dimitri's. Like that's basically that's all I got from him. But his strategy <laughs> is beautiful. Le- wait, okay, we gotta pause. We gotta acknowledge the beauty. Swoon. He's a firefighter. Okay, that's yes. <laughs> that's number one. That's right there. Uh. <sighs> Okay, we can continue. Talk about yeah. Gino. Great. Please. His strategy is he wants to go in nice and soft. Oh. Mm. Analyze his competition, eliminate the weak links, and build a solid alliance within different groups. Once his plan is organized in place and the time is right, he'll crank his throttle to the max. Boy, become stop an absolute <laughs> hot beast and get himself to the finals. This man knows exactly he why knows, he was cast. He knows what he's is, doing. Yeah. He knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, okay, sir. Sir, let's... Oh my goodness. First of all, you're gorgeous. We uh, know that. That's that. Second of all, uh, you know what you were saying when you said those words that you put together so eloquently. Uh-huh. Like, nobody is talking about, I'm just going to go in nice and soft. And I'm going to get my get my group together. And then I'm going to hit it full throttle. Like, come on, man. You are a full, fine firefighter. You know what you're doing. But I... I, I I'll allow it though. I will definitely yeah. allow it because. <laughs> so I have I do have a fear with Gino. I'm gonna bring up my my negative to Gino, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that is honestly the Dimitri's of it all. I feel like if people have watched the show, if he because he is the Greek god of BB Can Ten. Like he, all he talked about in his profile was loving Greece and Greek food, and all of that stuff, and, like, that feels like it's so much in his personality, that if people know the game, and people know Dimitri's, they're not gonna, they're, like, they're gonna target him. Yeah, I think, um, another thing with him being Greek, uh, a a couple people said their dream destination was Greece, and so hopefully he'll have that to connect with them on. Um, I think, just like a lot of these people, he comes off very personable. He's extremely athletic. He's attractive. Um, I think a lot of people are going to want to work with him. They might see him as a threat, but he seems like the type of threat that people like think they want to get out and then immediately like change their mind. I think he's the kind of threat that you'll be like, oh, he's a threat, but as long as he's on my side, yeah. he's not a threat to me. Like exactly. I would, I would do that. Like I would keep him around to win some competitions mm-hmm. for me and do some things that. I, you know, I couldn't do, but eventually, yeah, you had to think about getting him out, but you, and you can't wait too late when it's like, oof, ain't no way he can, <laughs> now he's not going. But yeah, he, I, I see flirty, possibly showmances in his future. Flirty, flirt, 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 flirty, flirt with a side. Yeah, I, I, I see a lot. I see. I mean, look at look at look at Dimitri when he came into the house. It was like, oh my god! And then he ended up with one of the hottest women on the show. Like, uh, come on! So I just and they're still and they're, and they're still, still together. together which they're I love. They're still together, which I love that for them so much. But yeah, I just I, I have 
high hopes for Gino. I hope Gino sticks around so we could at least look at him for a while. Um, I honestly don't care if Gino wins or not. I just want him to be there so I can look at him. And I hope we get a lot of Gino walking around without his shirt on, you know, he being the firefighter. He is never going to wear a shirt. He is never As he shouldn't. As he shouldn't. God has gifted <laughs> you. God has gifted this man with an opportunity to wear no shirts, and he should take every advantage of that. Um, and he might even surprise us all because we're just looking at the outer beauty of the man. He can be superly duperly smart, super caring, such a generous soul, such a kind person that nobody even wants to get him out because he's so nice. So I have high hopes for Mr. Gino and I have met a few Genos in my lifetime mm -hmm. and none of them has ever disappointed me. So <sighs> good luck to you, Gino. I'll be rooting for you a hundred percent and I will root for you a thousand percent. If you promise not to ever wear a shirt, thank you very much. And I am done. I think that's all that needs to be said. <laughs> yep. Uh huh. Summer. 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 <laughs> Period. Summer is summer. summer is 25. Shocker. Shockingly y'all. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo from Toronto. I, I, I did not see that one coming. I didn't see it coming. There's like four people that are Virgos from Toronto, and then there's like two of them that are Virgos from Tomor Toronto that are artistic. And I'm like, <laughs> what is happening? Anyway, she what? is fun she employed. Is, oh, she is fun employed. <laughs> she she is single. She is a woman after your heart, Lana. Because I love her. Her yeah. strategy is to maintain strong and strategic relationships. She wants to put God and herself first with every decision she makes. Most importantly, she will constantly remind herself that she came to win, not to make friends. Period. 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 I love her. I want her to do so well in this game. I want her to not get in put into that box of strong women going out early. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case for Summer. I think Summer can adapt in situations she just seems like that bubbly nice personality that mm -hmm. seems like and even if not seeing the video just her picture alone and the the her bio just gives off this personable energy yeah. and i feel like she will be somebody who can make moves but has to do it in such a strategic way so yeah. because it's so easy for women, especially, to get labeled as something that they aren't. So mm -hmm. I feel like every woman has to play this game a little bit differently, yeah. a little bit smarter, and a little bit more strategic. But lucky for us women, we are smarter and we are strategic. Yeah. So I, I was going to say, especially black women mm -hmm. in Big Brother, mm -hmm. especially. Lana, Summer is you if you were a 25 year old Virgo from Toronto. I mean, uh, I uh, <laughs> like, I, and I know you and I know how you play games. Summer yeah. is the 25 year old Virgo tr from Toronto version of you. And I'm somewhat fun employed, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I love, like, that is the best occupation ever. Uh, but yeah, I think she is going to be that person whose her social game is going to be so clean and, you know, it's going to be so good and she's going to lay under the radar when she needs to. She's going to plant seeds yeah. and let people do the work for her. And, you know, it's, it's sometimes your quiet game is the strongest game because it's like you don't have to be the loud, aggressive one. You just need to be cool with the loud aggressive one and just like you know what so and so is and then let the loud aggressive one go do the work and but you know behind the scenes you made that happen and and then when the time comes you cut that loud aggressive person out so you can claim your move at the end of the game yeah so yeah because you never let somebody go I, to the end of the game who could claim your move yeah. i mm -hmm. have a feeling she is going to be that girl this season Mm -hmm. And I'm excited for it. I can't wait. 
Yeah, she definitely seems like somebody that I would automatically assume is going to be like in the alliance that starts from the beginning. Um, very bubbly, very personal. I like that she mentioned strategic relationships. I think that she's really going to be working in the room. Um, I love her reason for coming on the show. Is that her coworker likes it and she doesn't like her coworker? <laughs> I mean, I was like, I would do that thing. I know. Uh, um, I like just the pettiness of it all. It's just beautiful. I, and that's a, a lot of her intro video is just being like, I am the pettiest person you will ever meet. And I was like, bring it. I love that. Um, very outgoing, very fun. She wants to be remembered for coming to play the game, I think. I mean, she says that they're not here um, to make friends. And so as long as she can make those connections, I think she's got a great shot. Um, yeah. She also said that um, God first, herself second, Arissa Cox third. So she's a fan oh, of the yes. show. And oh. I'm ready for it. <laughs> oh. She also this was one of, she was one of the few that said she wants to be remembered as the winner of BB Can 10, which yeah. I love, mm -hmm. I love. This woman is just everything. More the more y'all talk about her, the more I love her. I'm just, telling you, Lana, she is you. Uh, I love her. Okay, I, summer sales. It's you're you're the queen that I will change my Twitter account to summer sales stand account instantly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, we've got. I we we could talk about summer all day, and I wish we we could, but we have one more house guest. We're almost done. Yeah. I gotta I gotta take our logo out because we gotta see all of the beauty that is Miss Tanisha White. Yes. Tanisha. Yes, she is 32. She is a Scorpio from Montreal, Quebec. She is a model. She is booed up, and her True. strategy is to be the sweet, sweet, innocent girl from Montreal, kind of ditzy and clumsy, but will listen and observe like a hawk and strike with a hot knife when the times are right. And she also wants to present as very happy-go-lucky, so no one suspects her ulterior motives. Love Period. It. I mean, yeah, she is gorgeous being a model. Yes. Like, it's so <laughs> obvious. Um, I think, especially watching her video, she definitely does come off as a sweet, innocent girl. And so I think she's really going to be able to play that up. And playing Ditsy and maybe like she doesn't know what's going on, I think we'll probably keep her around a while. Um, you know, she watches Big Brother with her daughter, so she's a fan. And she describes herself as really bubbly, outgoing, positive, um, and that she doesn't want to be too much in the drama, but like she will like stand up for what she needs to. And so I think that's the perfect mix of what you need in a big brother player. And I really think that um, she's going to make it far in this game. Oh, she uh -huh. also says she's an undercover savage, which I love. Oh, oh. She's also, she's also a single mother, which mm -hmm. mad respect. Now, talking about the food question again, because you, Livy, mentioned the pickles. The pickles was actually Stephanie. Okay. Well, and the Tanisha. other person that said eggs other was than Tanisha? Kevin was Tanisha. Yes. I, I really, it. really like Tanisha. Like, she just, like, pulled me in immediately. Like, she seems so, like, down to earth and I'm just great. I mean, eggs are kind of versatile. You can do a lot with eggs. It's not just, you know. You I don't think have... it's funny that two people said it. <laughs> I, it is funny, and it's but it's like once you think about it, like oh yeah, I can scramble them, I can post I think, them, I can bowl them. Or, you know, I think two or three said pasta as well, so it's probably like tied for the most popular. Yeah, but I like Tanisha, and and I think that she if look as as a model, you have to play every role in with whatever they type cast you to do, or you know what you have to uh, portray. So I think she can do the acting up as the innocent girl, the ditzy, whatever. And I think that act is going to get her so far, but then she's going to have to switch up the strategy after being in the game for so long, because it's like, now you need to know. You can't just be ditzy, you know, all the time and not know after being in here for so long. But I think she's the type of person that can switch it up and, you know, mm -hmm. But and we know she's playing the role, so she's not really this. She definitely knows the game. She definitely understands it. She watches it with her daughter. Um, I am excited to see, and of course, I love anybody named Tanisha because my sister's name is Tanisha. So yep. that's another thing, even though it's not spelled the same way, but it's still pronounced the same way. Um, I can't wait to see what. Like, could you imagine a Summer and Tanisha alliance? Oh. Summer, I need summer. I need summer, Tanisha, 
And oh. me, uh, Melina. Melina. Oh my God. Summer, no. Summer oh, Tanisha, Melina, Betty, and Helena in an alliance together. Yes. Did I just name all the women of color? Yes, I sure yes. fucking did. Yes. Um, I, it would be amazing. <laughs> oh, oh I would just, I would love it. I would love it. I would love it. But throw Jessica in there too, though. Put Jessica in that oh, alliance absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely put Jessica in of that course. alliance. Everyone but Stephanie and JC Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 Wow. Otherwise. <laughs> yes. I'm about well, to say, prove up. you show me the first right. week at the, the Stephanie and JC Lynn. And if, if you're cool yeah. enough, we'll invite you to the party. But sure. Mm -mm. Well, that is 16 Canadian house guests for Big Brother Canada season 10. Now, I am going to ask the question, and I'm going to ask you to make a completely almost baseless winner pick. Summer. Okay. Nice because two. I like her. And Jessica. Sure. I have you can two. only pick one. No, okay. I pick two. Summer okay. and Jessica. <laughs> it's going to be I'm a thinking... tie. It's going to be the first tie in Big Brother history. Period. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, I'm just going to go with one. I think Josh. Oh, okay. My okay. I, okay, so as much as I love all of my queer babies, and as much as I love um, a lot of the people on this cast, and a lot of the men are very attractive, my winner pick, almost completely baseless, it's going to be Helena. Yeah. I, okay. I just feel like, you know, being the everyday girl is going to get her somewhere in this game, and I could be completely wrong. I usually am, but I am gonna I'm gonna put my eggs in the Helena basket okay. for now and see what happens. Okay, I will put my eggs all in summer. I okay. won't say okay. two in it, so it'll all be so, summer. Summer, Josh, and Helena. Interesting yeah. picks. Obviously, they're most of the people on this cast I really like from first mm -hmm. impression. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be rooting for a lot of people. That will change because it always does on Big Brother. But mm -hmm that's Big Brother Canada. Now, we are still not entirely sure what our schedule is going to be. Um, we know we'll be live for evictions on Thursdays, and that's about all we know right now. We might do a second show every week, maybe, but uh, once we figure out what we're doing, uh, you will know on Twitter, at the cup underscore reality. Um, so make sure to follow, subscribe, hit the notification bell for all of our content. You can also, if you only care about Big Brother, you can do a customized uh, notification for just Big Brother. That is a thing you can do on YouTube. So if you only care about Big Brother, you can do that too, but also just hit the notification bell in general because we're great and we have a lot of content. Uh, pretty much daily at this point with, with how much we have going on. But... Livy, thank you so much for joining us again for Big Brother. I cannot wait to have you yeah. on for more of the season. Yeah, I'm so excited for the season and thanks for having me. I mean, I am definitely interested in seeing your perspective since this mm -hmm. is your first season actually watching Big Brother Canada. So I would love to hear what you think about it and compare it to U.S. Big I know. Brother. All I know is I was very involved in, in the preseason last year of Big Brother Canada, and I watched like three episodes, and then I just got busy with work. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to see kind of how it plays out. Cool. Well, if anything, uh, the cup will keep you at least somewhat on board <laughs> with the season, even if you yeah. have to stop watching. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but halfway through, I'll have to leave and then start again later. But right. you can come back for the finale. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. But... With that, I'm going to end it here because we didn't hit two hours and I'm happy about it. So yes. with that, lovelies, cheers to you all with cheers. Pitcha Paytas because she deserves spotlight. So, yes. Uh, goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye now. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, Bye. Why are you still yes, here? Yes, no. It's time to go. Bye. <laughs> Bye.